All right, just make sure everybody's coming in. Just make sure you're talking about <clears throat> everything should be good. Yep. Is everything good? Everything seems like it's working out well. Do you need like a remote control to hit that at the same time that we control record? Would that help helpful? Oh, well, well, our main thing is we're about to go of like one, two, three. That means we can get a sync point for Tony. Yeah, but I know, but like, is clicking that like right at the same time as you go? I don't go, think that, don't think that, that will matter point? regardless. I mean, if you could do it where it would start both at the same time, then yes, that would be helpful. Yeah, that's what I was, because you know, like when people got the cameras on the phone and they got the little thing to take their picture, I, and I'm like, I don't know if there's a, app, a computerized apparatus where I could wire them both in. And then when I hit record over here, we hit record over there. If that, you get what I'm saying. You know, I understand. Tell me where I look at. All right. A one, a you two. Got a lot of lights. A one, two, three. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of the, wow, Conscious Reconstruction. I almost I messed up again. Yeah, I almost did. We do this way too many times a week to, like, they all kind of start running together, don't they? No, I just be forgetting the names. No. Oh. Well, like, try to cover I, for you. Man, yeah, no, I'm going to be honest. I just forget which name of the show I'm supposed to be saying. Yeah, and plus, like, when you did the three, two, one, I wasn't ready. So I just had to, like, dive in. Um, oh. Yeah. No, I wasn't ready at all. Oh. Uh, I was talking about how these lights are really, really bright. Are they? I softened them all. It's directly in my face. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's never going to be pleasant. Yeah, and I'm pretty light sensitive in general so i thought for some reason i thought you were gonna say light skin sensitive and i'm like mm. huh nope no nope. <laughs> what does that even just, mean just bright lights in my face generally hurt make my eyes hurt and uh, then give me i headache. don't think that's just a you thing well i just try not to speak for everybody else i don't know what people be doing some niggas be staring at light bulbs so what I, weirdo does that <laughs> I don't know, but I'm not trying to judge them. I'm just letting them I am. do them. If it don't hurt their eyes, rock out. Or it might just be. Or they like that. Again, rock out. But, you know, it's uh, terrible. But um, how have you guys been? How was your weekend? Oh, full of a scratchy throat. What about you, Ash? It was excellent. Got to see Batman. Rode some scooters in front of the Cleveland sky. Da, 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 what else did I do? Um, ordered some more records online. <laughs> I think you might have a skull shoving addiction. I probably do, and I don't give a fuck. So I ordered these two because the ones I was looking for in the record store. He was like, "Yeah, they don't press it no more." Fuck! So I had to order internationally, which wasn't that bad. No, that's good. Yeah, it wasn't as much as I thought that it was going to be. But now this made me be like, well, what else is out there that I can't find on CD? <laughs> now I'm just looking. I'm going to get this shit. Well, that's bad. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I've started it. Now here we are. I realized that my bookshelves are filled up. I need another bookshelf. Like, How often do you actually take your records and listen to them? I don't have a record player. So I'm never... Oh. I gave mine away right before I got divorced. My ex gave me one of them fucking Jensen ones with like the five and one players. Oh. It's really shitty. And when he got it for me, I was like, oh, gave him one of those. Thanks. <laughs> Cause I knew how shitty them things was. <laughs> like any kind of any like anything when it comes to audio fidelity, when they talk about doing anything like more than one anything is oh just my like, God. Unless it's like a combination C D The speakers were shitty. Like uh, I used it. Cause it was in my bedroom and then I had the sound bar. So I used it for like playing like meditation CDs and stuff like that. So it got used a little bit, but it can't even handle the high end of the meditation. I feel like CDs. I it's a thought that counts. Nah. I mean, I tried. Did pretend. you really put any thought in something when you purposely bought something that everyone knows is bad? No. Or was it just a convenience? Yeah. He didn't know. He wasn't like a music I didn't person. know that it was bad oh. until you both shit on it. Like, Oh, if it has more than one feature, then it's terrible. Well, I mean, think about anything uh, like that. I thought that. was, oh, that's dope. <laughs> he thought of the fact he that did. she likes records. Let me buy her a record player so she can play a record. Sure End did. of thought. End of thought. All that extra superfluous shit that y'all named is what I just called it. Extra and superfluous. 
No, it isn't. No, it's it not. Is. If I'm going to go if out you... and I'm going to seek and purchase something for a significant other, I'm actually going to do no, research that's on into gift it. Two, when she learns me and tells me, I appreciate the thought of this, but let me show you some of the better quality things. And now we're on a journey together. But if she can't be that nimble, then fuck are we doing here? I don't know. I don't. I, I just research gifts before I get them because I don't like giving people crappy stuff. I played it and I used Reading it. Reads, things online doesn't always work out. No, it doesn't always work out. So I could have read shit online and said, oh, yeah, this works great. It does all the things that I'm looking for it to do. But if I don't know musical terminology and things that someone who's an audiophile would know to look for, then my research probably won't end up netting me the same results that y'all got. That's why I go into the store. I don't trust them niggas. I mean, I, I know how I retail don't, niggas get hired. I'm, debating on my I'm shit. doing, I'm debating on well, my no, head. I'm just, it's I do multiple mine. things. <laughs> I know. It's like I will do my research and then I will go into the thing and then I will hit forums and do all types of stuff and then I buy stuff. That's how I research for this camera. I used it though. Like yeah, I no, used it. I got a good purpose out of it. It played my CDs. I it, hook up my like, phone to it. But I was not putting my records on there. I'm like, this will fuck my shit up. You don't do that. Them Crosley things, anything that got like 400 and 501 things, don't buy. If you really want to do like a safe bet, Audio Technica got some pretty cool stuff that's budget friendly and like it won't fuck your shit up. That's basically but see, one. That's but all I you gotta to say to the nigga when he gets you that. Hey, I know that you know that I love records and you are trying to. These are gonna mess up my records though. I didn't play no records. He I used it for the other know, shit. But he probably had no idea that this is gonna scratch. I mean, the record I would up. guarantee you that he bought you a record player. He bought it for the purpose of it primarily being a record player. And he's just like, you know, yeah, I'm like he was real thoughtful. No That's why I used it. I wasn't like, oh fuck this shit. And I used that's it. That's my point. <laughs> where you just say, hey. The reason I don't play my records on it is this. Now, I used it, though. Like I wasn't just letting it sit there. Like, like I said, it was in the bedroom. It was like, all right, well. I didn't have, I put the sound bar in the living room. So I'm like, oh, this would be cool for Ash the bedroom. Ash clearly decided that me and you can't argue over her gift. No, you can't. Because I <laughs> will refuse to look like Ash was being a fucking Oh, no, bastard. it has nothing to do with you. you. That's how you're making to me out to be like, you're a fucking no, unappreciated not, bitch. It's you let so, that damn thing sit there? It's the primary thought process difference between myself and Tony. It's just like whenever my gifts, while they may be somewhat more impulsive at times, when I have the impulse, then I go out and I seek, I seek out the information to make sure I get the right stuff. Like when I bought a, uh, that doesn't right. sound impulsive. Yeah, it is. I chose to do this. It took him a while though, that, to no, get no, to that no, point no, no, to no. give it. I had this impulse to. That's I had this impulse, impulse to buy this thing. That's not impulsive. Yeah, it is. No, it's, it's not. I had the it. impulse to buy this thing, no, no, and then no. I planned no, out no, the no. rest of the things. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. What you're, what you're doing is using <laughs> a like, word. And then trying to use it in two contexts. I'm, and those contexts aren't the same. So you had an impulse. Yes. <laughs> he said you had a impulse, but this is not that, impulsive. That is not impulsive. Impulsive <laughs> is Tony. Hey, I think that she might like this. I'm buying this right now. Oh. That's, well, a, that's, that's the, impulsive. That I, but I also like good results. Your research. Thought, no, no. So then what you do is take that impulse that you had. And then become thoughtful and start thinking about all the ways that you can improve upon this idea. Yeah. That's not impulsive, my nigga. That's ruminating. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? I mean, yeah, I'm impulsive. So I get an idea oh, and then I, I just not think about it. myself as impulsive. That is I just have an impulse. I, I had get, an impulse. No, you said I'm impulsive in give giving. No, 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 you're not. Because that's how you get someone like me who was like, oh, I know she likes this. I saw it. I'm about to just buy it. I didn't do no research. It was in the store. I saw it. Thought you would like it. Oh, this is crap. All right. Well, why? All right, cool. I'm not going to get you nothing like this next time. Or I'll just call you. Hey, I seen this. You want it? And if the answer is yes, then I'm going to buy it. Or I'll just buy it. And then now it'll be here. And if you don't like it, then I'll buy something else. Like. I'm fine with that because. Uh -huh. Like whenever I go out and buy also, also I generally know people who are more so experts about a lot of different things. So I have people who I can touch bases with to figure Me, things out. I don't think to do that. It's not that I don't have the resources to call upon. It's my brain doesn't go gift. Let me ask experts about <laughs> gift. <laughs> no, no, it goes gift, purchase gift, give gift. 
done. <laughs> both on the same track. Now just balance these two out to make a perfect gift giving experience. <laughs> I think my per- I think I'm the perfect gift giving experience. Listen, oh, they both agree. Look, no, I I got this one in the bag. No, oh, that's this. what this is. Okay. I'm good at this. Yeah, yeah. No, this is us. This is both of y'all being like, no, nah, nigga, I get the best gifts. No, nah, nigga, I get the best gifts. Yeah, he's chirping. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you're His gonna gift get the takes most frequent. six months to get. You're gonna get the most frequent <laughs> the guys, gifts from him. I'm, you just gonna be gifts like for me already in that time period that you got that one from him. Yep, but you, it's gonna be like the most crispy, most useful. It's just hey, after 15, all these gifts are home runs. <laughs> I'm like, no, because all I'm doing is whittling down and learning what you like. At that point, they're like, you. It, that's like taking 15 shots before you start making shots of the basketball game. What are you doing? I had never claimed to be efficient. I claimed to be Kobe. <laughs> nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm no, Kobe. Good shots. All the shots. No, no. I'm Kobe and Clay Thompson. Did you hear? Clay what? Thompson always had the green, sh- green no, no. light and he always makes shots. No, no, no. If you hear Draymond Green talk about Clay Thompson, he said that what he knows and what he had to learn about Clay Thompson while playing with him is that Clay is going to take the shot. Yep. Regardless of whether it's a good shot, bad shot, whatever, he's going to take the shot. You just got to put him in position for all his shots to be good ones because if you don't give him the ball, he going to make sure he get the ball and then he just going to jack it up because fuck that. He not passing it. He taking the shot. It can be the worst shot in the world. That's me. I'm taking these shots, nigga. Nah. The fuck is you talking about? Nah, dog. Nah. If she put me in a position to take an amazing shot and kind of let me know what she really loves... Boom, I'm taking that shot. But I'm also taking all these other shots as well. Uh-huh. I'm going to end up with a 60-point game. It'll be fine. Uh, you're going to end up on 60 points with like, not a, with more than 60 shots. Nah. As a person who likes receiving gifts, thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Now, also. <laughs> now I got to track down a record. I want to track down a record. You know what a good way of shopping for record players? Going to old people uh, garage sales. Oh, that might be pretty cool. They're, they did like, I actually want my grandfather's old record player. It's still sitting over there. It's direct mechanical, mechanically driven. It's not belt driven or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know what I want yet, but I know I'm going to build it this okay. year. So I'm going to get something. You niggas be speaking French to me. <laughs> what? Like mechanically driven as opposed to belt driven? I recognize that sounds like it's built like a watch. Yeah. Quint- quintessentially. So you have things directly fueling the thing where something's belt driven, the belt will wear out or it'll get loose progressively just like inside any type of car and the belt will need to be replaced. So why aren't cars mechanically driven? There are some that are mechanically driven now. They've actually been slowly progressively getting rid of belts and things like that for the most part for a while. Mm. Notice you don't have to get like random belts replaced anymore. I don't notice that. Well, yeah, because it just didn't happen as much. No, when I was getting cars before, it was just a terrible situation. Well, that's also true. But yeah, I was like, um, I didn't have cars long <laughs> well, enough I get a belt for replaced. that to be an issue. Like, I was getting a new car like every month, every three months, something like that. It was, it was, it was like getting new, getting new timing belt. You mean get, get a, a new, new car? car? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's literally what it was. Hey, your car get broke a new down. Car? You can fix it, or 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 <laughs> I could buy a new car. <laughs> I'll just buy a different car. I'm not putting money into this piece of shit. <laughs> That's crazy. It's just like, like how much is that, that time of belt? Six hundred dollars. This more than I paid for the car, bro. I've never understood those people to be like, I paid eleven hundred dollars for the car, and I've put three thousand into it, and I got to put it back in the shop. Hmm. You know, you could have gotten three eleven hundred dollar cars by now. <laughs> That would have done all of the things that you needed to do continuously. <laughs> you got $300 cars right now. Like, you could have just Why are we so attached to this like one decision? Car and then actually no, fuck that. Fuck, why? Why? If this one lasts me three months and then it breaks down and I buy another one for $1,100 and it lasts me three months and it breaks down and I buy another one for $1,100 and it lasts me three months and it breaks down and I buy another one for $1,100. So in $4,400, I haven't had a headache no stress. That sounds like a headache. How? Because I'm constantly going out and buying cars. So I hate that process. Not really. You just go to a little quick, cheapy lot, hand them cash. They give you a car. It's not a really a hard process. 
It's a hard process if you go to a lot, lot where you got to go and get like a loan. I'm buying a cheapy thousand dollar car. They just want their money. I want this vehicle. We signing titles and moving on about our day. Mm. That's a very simple process. That runs antithetical to everything that I represent. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Right. But you walked for a whole year to, tell this to save up this $4,000 and then started driving. And I drove the entire year. Oh, I mean, I got money more than likely. I had the money too. We just spent it differently. <sighs> but I'm going to be driving in like the same car for probably like three years. That's cool. You're attached to that. I don't give a fuck about cars. Well, it's just if like, I'm driving a new car, I'll learn so it eventually, and then of- that'd be it. And then I'll get a new one, and I'll learn that one. <sighs> you know, I don't care about materialistic shit. It, it's it, not it, even necessarily about caring about the materialistic things. It's more so about me being as efficient as possible. Like I would rather spend a little bit more on the front end than not have to spend. Any oh, more I agree with end. that now, a thousand percent. <laughs> You were arguing with uh, you're I'm arguing with twenty three year old Tony. Yeah, back then I was fuck it. I'm just gonna buy another. What are you talking about? Fix this belt? No, no, no. Your engine block cracked. Hmm. So y'all no. gonna put a new engine in this four hundred five hundred dollar car? You're done with that. I'm going to buy a new car. So you wanna? All right. So I had this piece of shit. I think it was a like a Corsica. I don't even know what the a, hell it's that is. It's a Chevy Corsica. It's a Chevy Corsica. Yep. Yeah. I remember oh, a Chevy Jesus fucking Corsica. Christ. Yeah, hell I don't even know what that is. Have, exactly. Is that the one with the uh, red velvet on the inside? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't remember so, those. It was my nice. mean ass auntie had one of those. My fucking um, radiator went out and I ain't had no antifreeze. So I was pouring water in it. But out here, it you freezes. Sometimes it's like below freezing temperatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the water froze inside my engine block and split it. Damn. Yep. Why did your. That's it, a it, very interesting thing. Like, one, like, oh, well, no, it's an older car. So that means you probably had anti free. Because the way things are supposed to work is like towards the end of your car when you turned off, you're supposed to pump everything back up into the radiator. So that means everything can be cool by the time you turn it back on. But obviously that wasn't going to work that way. There's also some other issues. Like there was a water pump issue. I mean. It's called the Corsica. As of this point, I said you, I'm thinking you should have let it go probably then. I did. <laughs> it's just like, car. Like, it's like as soon as they said your engine black crack you want to replace it this no is I got I bought a new car I've yeah. I've left cars on the side of streets like my first car died on me so I said well that's life and I moved on without that um I had a Plymouth laser I think I remember that one it was white two door yeah, yeah I do remember that one Plymouth turned into Dodge for all those that don't know. Yes. But yeah, it was hella old when I got it. But I was, whatever. Fuck it. It drives. It gets me from point A to point B. That's all I need. It, it got you from like one high school. Women to don't other. be tripping as long as they ain't got to walk and catch the bus. Like if you a nigga that got his, I had my own place. I had a job and I have a way to get around and come take you places. Women was going. That's all 18, 20 year old Tony needed. The standards. Oh my god. Yeah, the standards were terrible in in the gutter. Well, it's not even and, necessary. No, they were in the gutter. No, no, no. They were in the gutter. That should not be what my standard was. Is women going for it? Yes. That's that. Did, did we hear? <laughs> <laughs> We've arrived. <laughs> no, sir. I mean, that was a point in time <laughs> okay. in our yeah, lives where like all we cared about around. was getting the city of the east. Right. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> pussy don't like to be cold, not and I don't all. like cold pussy. So not we not at all. We gonna get these cars. <laughs> To these? keep it warm and, and lubricated. <laughs> All I knew is women being upset that they got to catch the bus to go see their nigga. I don't like unhappy pussy. I like the happy um, ones. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> dealing with that. You got to come catch the bus to come see me. Or I got to catch the bus to I come gotta see you. I got to walk with you to the bus stop. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't catch the bus. Like, That's just something I don't stop. do. You want like, to walk into the fucking bus stop, Tony? <laughs> before I would catch the bus. <laughs> And go yeah, away. Yeah, shiverous. Shiverous. No. Uh, I mean, I can't really argue. I prefer <laughs> walking over catching the bus nine times out of ten anyway. 
Anytime I've caught the bus, I've had a very unpleasant experience. I had a nigga try and force me to gamble with him where he said he was going to give me $20 and that <clears> if I won, I would get it. And then I beat him. But he said, no, nah, but you got to bet $20 now. And I said, I don't understand how this works. <laughs> I won. So that should be the 20 That's I'm betting. Mine. He said, no, no, no. You got to also put up some money. No, thank you. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. This is a setup. It, you want me to feel like I'm about to get this 20 after I bet you and beat you again and come away with 40 since I put my 20 down. But what you going to do is finesse me out of this 20 I just put on the table. I think not. <laughs> and it's always been some weird shit like that when I've gotten on the bus. So I don't like to ride the bus. I, I mean, what the fuck am we doing here? Is it weird that whenever I, I and don't then know. I used to think that like bus stops were like mobile zoos. <laughs> That's when I stopped taking a buzz When this nigga told me that He was like Let me apologize for it I'm like No no You already think I didn't it mean And to then I stopped her, But I definitely Yeah like I was like Ho So like I'm not catching shoes. buses no more Unless it's absolutely necessary What? This is when I, I was working at Bonnie Speed And he picked me up one day For the fucking podcast It was like Yeah it looked like zoos to me And yeah. then I stopped You ever been to a zoo? <laughs> No, uh, what you can just kind of roll by and look. So at the when animals. you're in the zoo, you just go roll through. You look at them; they're behind this glass thing <laughs> that protects you from them. And that's exactly how bus stops work. They're with them behind this see-through glass that they just got to sit through and be doing whatever they're doing. Sometimes they're eating. Sometimes they're just sitting there. Sometimes they're arguing. They're just living their lives. So you just kind of roll through while your car watching them. They're like mobile zoos for people. It's weird. Yep, and well, the entire purpose of that is to break the wind. Only time I, I know d- what the real purpose of it is, but what it, it reminds like. me of is a zoo. Uh, you got little zoos around the city. The, uh, I don't things. know. The only place, like, why not cover them up? And why do we have to see the people? Because they need to be able to see the bus coming. No, no, no. If you need to see the bus coming, the side Uh-oh. would need to be open. The glass aside, because that's how the traffic flows. Why is the back panel open for us just to look at you. You don't see the bus coming straight across the street. That's not how fucking vision works. Uh, I mean, I because have they logistics. want you to look at these people and judge them. That's why they do it. And I just noticed it one day. I was like, huh? Yeah, we think marketing ain't as deep as it is, but it's that fucking deep for everything. Is like a design to get I mean, you to buy I, more, pay attention to this more, whatever. I don't know if that's how bus stops are everywhere. It don't really matter. For the most part, what yeah. What matters is I mean, that I've pretty much been a lot of places. <laughs> like, there are certain places that I know where public transportation is better than others. Like, obviously, New York City tra- public transportation, while shitty, is better than most every other city in the face of the earth because... I'll say that probably the best public transportation is... Well, that I've seen in Seattle. Uh, that makes sense. Chicago actually has pretty good public transportation, too, because they actually have, like, a subway that... They have a train that actually runs in parallel with the highway. So that means you can actually park your car at the beginning of the highway, walk up some steps, and then take a train in directly into the city. Same thing with... Uh, Seattle. Seattle. They have a train system that goes north and south. Um, it goes all the way north to, like, Shoreline. <clears throat> And then south down into Kent. Uh, they have hella bus lines. So many bus lines that Amazon and um, Microsoft also have their own bus lines that just take their employees to them and to home or to like the different stops, there different locations. Courses. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, but their buses are also running like 24 7. Yeah, I mean, I try, honestly believe most bus systems should run 24-7. Oh, no, I agree. They just don't. That's just not how it exists out here. Yeah. RTA stops running at like, what, 12 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, don't um, be stuck. Don't be stranded at one o'clock in the morning. You fucked. <laughs> if you at the um bus station, but the actual buses, they just run in say every hour. They run every hour? At night. Yeah, like around 12 or something. They just run once every hour. The train stopped, yeah. But That's the crazy. Buses, once every hour is terrible. Yeah. <clears throat> I forgot. I think I was coming home from Shaker If you Shaker miss a bus, night. you could be out there until daytime. Bruh, I had to get off at 79th and Kinsman one night because I didn't know that they the train stopped running. 
I'm not was, getting off at 79th and kids been in I'm the like, middle of the night at all. I'm, I'm okay, staying I'm on like, the bus. I'm staying on this. Why are we not moving? <laughs> why are we going to move again? No, oh, bitch, you got to move. So I got off and took the 15 at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, this is the day I get booty raped. I know it. <laughs> yeah, see, no, I'm not. I dealing. made it home that night, but also. It's like, I'm also I always I learned a valuable super, lesson. I don't know. Also, buses are always the place where I still feel like I have the have the highest possibility of being able to uh, possibly apply my martial arts skills is just like, yeah, I think you know, couple the likelihood of me getting a fight on a fight on a bus is very high. I think couple what he said. And then one day when I was going to work, this old ass man wanted me to move. Like I was, I stood up to get off the bus and he started trying to like pick a fight with me. He called me a bitch and everything. I'm like, Oh, I have to leave before I punch you in the fucking face. Cause it was like one yeah, Stop. why? Before I had to get off, I'm like, I gotta go to work. He like yelling at me, why like, dude, like, I'm telling him, like, why are you talking to me like that? And he like wanted me to move because I think I was in his way trying for him to get on the bus. And then he started cussing me. I'm like, yo, yo, why the fuck are you talking to me like that? Then he just went on. I'm like, I can't fight no old man. I got to get the fuck off right now. <laughs> no, I'd have fought that old man. <laughs> Regardless, so he's bad. the one who takes the L. I just no, yelled at him like, yo, who the fuck you think you talking to? I would have been the second Cleveland um, bus video. No. Y'all remember that girl that got uppercut nope. by the bus driver? I'd have been the girl uppercutting the old man. This old ass Old ass nigga. I was like, yo, what the, who the fuck punch. you think you talking to? It really came out of my mouth. And then it hit me like, I'm not about to be this person. I'm oh, right here at work. I'm getting punch off. punch old man. No, I was See, just like, I can't these do very it. convenient overhanging bars on the bus. So what you do is you grab those and you just kick them off the bus. Bro, I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Yeah, I got off because right when I was like, Yo, who the fuck you think you talking to? I got places to? to go, but I'm punching you in your shit as I walk off this <laughs> he bus. He had the walker and oh, everything. No. I was That's the so I'm amazed. kicking him off the bus as I'm Nigga, breathing. you crippled and you talking shit? <laughs> Bro, he you was don't understand on the position that I could put you in. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm also very tempted privilege. to like, go And this sounds of- like elderly abuse, but you also got me fucked up. No, I don't write. Okay. I don't, I mean. I was you, just, I just know how it could be seen. When you out here. Out, they were like, oh, these niggas talking about they beat the old people. But like, nah. It's not you like doing? We're out, I'm not I'm just trying to punch to every you. single old person. No, not at all. But it's just this particular you know, old person who tried to start talking all dusty and didn't go. That's what I'm saying. Like, talk is cheap. He could have said a being one things, but I recognize in that moment, I have to get off this bus. I don't want to hit an old ass man. I don't want to do it. So I'm getting off. Now, if it would have been between, like, a girl that was my age and whatever, and then that could have probably happened. But not with no old-ass fucking man. I'm like, dude, you just grumpy as fuck. You should have known better. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like, it made me realize, like, don't nobody really give a fuck no more. Niggas is not getting up for pregnant women no more. Like, it was bad when I started looking around. I'm like, man, I got to change my situation. (laughs) It's really, like... Dudes are not being for real gentlemanly anymore. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Women that are got fucking crazy. I was just like, well, society is changing. <laughs> speaking of change and society changing, uh, Wendy Williams will be ending her show. No, Wendy Williams' show is canceled. I, I don't know if it's being canceled. Well, I guess Wendy Williams' show is officially being canceled. <laughs> I feel like canceled is such a strong word. <laughs> when, Oh. It's loose, being used directly inside the verb right. that it's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, and no, I don't, but I feel like that's wrong. What else word are we going to be using? She would still be doing the show if she was allowed to. Right. I don't think so. Yeah, she would. I don't think so. What makes you think that? All of her positioning seems like she's moving away from the fact that I don't have autonomous control over this. And generally when black people make those movements a la Dave Chappelle, there's a media backlash of, oh, they're crazy. Oh, they're 
all of these extra things, which is kind of basically what's happened to Wendy Williams. I mean, mm. she, was, that, she was probably her vagina in front of a bunch of people. But he was but, saying it's more so like them putting that out there. Like, yeah, like think about how many celebrities that might have been falling in line and they're not putting like with a uh, who do I think got punished for that? I think Eddie Murphy kind of got punished for his extracurricular activities when he wasn't falling in line with Hollywood. Because like think about when he made like Harlem Nights and coming to America and all that shit. I think he got I think those things came to light in like the 90s, though. Early 80s, late 90s. So. Those movies, yeah. But when he started getting there for real trouble, I don't know if he'd always been in trouble, but or like he was saying with Dave Chappelle, when they start saying like, oh, I'm starting to make these moves or I'm canceling deals and all of a sudden. Oh, he's look, crazy. Yeah, and it happens a and lot. They or So, yeah, they do that a lot to us when or shit, Nick Cannon with the whole making Mel him out to be joke or uh, what's his name? The dude that they... I can't think of his name. I think it might be... What he's someone he in music. What did he make? He's not... He doesn't make music. He's like an executive. But like... He's a black, but then they also called him a culture vulture. Because he like wanted to do something different. And it's just like, I mean, you can't really be a culture vulture of your own culture. That, but that's that my point. Sensible. But it became a cool thing to kind of like shit on him. And oh. so it's like, but it was cool to shit on Dave Chappelle. It was cool. Everybody was like, oh, that nigga went crazy. Who turns down this much money? Oh, like I they, don't think anybody. That's, I mean, Dave Chappelle was very candid about why he turned down that. Much no, he money. was not in the beginning. I mean, I think it was pretty obvious the reason why. I no. Turned. Well, one, he didn't need that much money. That's not, but that's not obvious in the beginning. That wasn't obvious in the beginning. What was put out is he turned down $51 million um, and was going crazy and moved to Africa. That was. Yeah, that's what all I knew before he started speaking. What right? The common person knows that he went crazy and then left and went to Africa. That's not what really happened. But I that's mean, what was put out to people. I mean, I didn't necessarily. I never heard that personally. The, I just I heard the fact that he turned down fifty one million dollars, but like all money, like the saying goes, like the saying is, all money ain't good money. But the common person doesn't look at it like that when because the, the, the common numbers person would sell out their something that, for fifty one million dollars. Yes, because they can't imagine that type of money, and so when they don't have a reference point of like what <clears throat> what comes with that. Then yeah, they look at you like, oh, you got to be crazy if you're going to turn that down. I would never. They couldn't. They couldn't fathom a situation in which it makes sense to say no to that. Well, I guess they haven't. They're not necessarily students of the same thing that I'm students of because I'm looking at like record contracts. There's a billion. There's no, a lots of people who no, most people aren't like aren't that into those. People things. turn down the large contracts every single day. But most people aren't into those niches like you. Yeah, I understand that, but it's just like. There are bands who break up because of the fact it's just like, oh, we're willing to pay you hundreds of million dollars, but you guys pretty much want to dictate our lives. A hundred million dollars is not worth basically 10 years of our lives that you get to just dictate and have us do whatever you want. And then probably put some like poison pills within the contract that allow you to terminate early, but we can't terminate early. And it's just like, nah, doc. Like, yeah, but but again, that's why I feel like this is like it's, oh, it's where just, Whitney Williams she probably couldn't terminate early, but they can, and it's like the, all mean, right. So let's say we go to a network, correct, and then we have a disagreement, but instead of being able to like stop production or remove or do something different with our show, we just don't come in, and they put in three other niggas. In our seats, and they just continue doing our show. That's what happened to Wendy Williams' show. Mm. Over the last few months, they've just putting been putting other famous people in her seat and having them do the show. Oh, uh, I mean, impl- overall implications not super great. I don't necessarily like w- Wendy Williams, so a plus for me. <laughs> Charles has died on this. He said, no, I don't like her. 
I, I really don't like her. <laughs> I I support. I respect that. I respect that you said. I, I you've it's, you've kind of been clear on like I don't fuck with Wendy Williams. And very clear. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying she's a culture vulture. She's pretty much actually a vulture. Oh, my she God. goes around picking <laughs> on people's dead carcasses with, when they're pretty much at their lowest of their low. And then I kind of just think it's funny that it's happening to her now. Because I don't have any. You put that energy out into the world. You get that energy back. Um, I mean, I guess you can say that. I don't know if she's. <clears throat> Would you say she's worse than any of the white uh, media pundits that do pretty much the same thing? Who are the vice media pundits who? Um. All right, TMZ. Oh. Uh, TMZ is an entity ultimately useless and that's what they built their entire brand on so is she as an individual worse than TMZ as a whole probably not but I don't know any is there like a name show for any particular person on TMZ no it's just TMZ yeah, with so the main just, white guy that be over there the old white guy the black dude with dreads that be getting that got screamed on by Kanye it's just then, like this is just what TMZ is so that means they're gonna alternate out no matter what they do and but I feel like this is kind of what Wendy Williams built her entire career on but that's what TMZ built their entire career on no being. they built their entire platform on that so but my thing is why is it worse than no, for no, no. individual for her? You make it you you minimize it like she doesn't have a platform. Like Wendy Williams isn't a platform. It is just because it's her name doesn't change that it's a platform. Like TMZ, she is a platform. Uh, <clears throat> the Wendy Williams show appears on what network? Um. Like I think it's like uh, don't make me or lie. Fox or something, something like that. that. Some of these well, no, it's just TV like shows. whereas TMZ is like when I say a pl- okay, I'm misusing the term. When you TMZ is a network, no, it's not, isn't it? Nope. Uh, is it's it? just their own individual entity, like you know those like gossip magazines, like the Shade Room. Yeah, it's like that. Uh-uh. Yeah, it just TV, and it comes no on channel. TV, like ABC. It's a or show. ABC. Yeah, it's yeah. a show. Oh, just like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, uh, uh-huh. how do we hold her to this like crazy standard? And as black people are like, oh, no, that's crazy. She can't be. Like, but then we allow the whites to do it to us and say nothing. Oh, because I don't necessarily care what they say about us because they've been saying <clears throat> that shit for our entire life. That's not new. But why do we have to kick each other? I guess my thing is if we're not OK with kicking. We shouldn't allow anyone to kick us. We, if we, and if we're okay with some kicking and okay with people profiting off of that kicking, then I would rather it be a black person profiting than a white person because they oh, profit all the time. We can stop both. All right. Well, I'm fine with, like I said, it's it could be like, the first one. But I mean, if I'm going to allow someone to just be kicking on me, I'm going to stop. Like, if someone's trying to kick me from far away, it's like, I'm going to stop the person who's, like, immediately kicking me that's very close to me as opposed to the person who's far away. Because the person who's supposed to be close to me kicking me is more so, like, I guess it's the look of betrayal as opposed to expected action. It's like, I always see these people wanting And I think that's me. unfair. That's not fair? Not really. I don't think that she's ever like championed hey i am going to be for the people she's i'm going to be she a her job. Media. I mean, I've never been for she the people. She said, i'm a news entity that's going to do these things like all these no, other news, news entities do news and like, i'm a gossip TMZ. yeah there we go gossip entity <laughs> gossip and news because they do break stories and regardless of it being gossip it's also generally facts so uh-huh. that's news it's not news that is important but it's news this is gossipy news, yes. But it's not gossip in the way that, oh, this is this is untrue. Uh I mean She said things that have like ruined people's relationships. I can admit that. She said something that ruined um that fucked up meth's relationship. What? Meths? Meth the man. man. Oh. Yeah, had him and his wife inside of like some turmoil because she like revealed some shit talking about either. 
it was either like some cheating or like some past things that he had done, like when they weren't married or together. Just some shit that you probably don't want expressed on national TV. Um, it's like and that'd also, be the first way you, you hear. It. But because that's what she, that's what well, new, these news entities do. When your job is to capture it's to as much many trade people, on people's lives. No, no, your your job is to capture as much attention as possible. And what people are interested is in is other people's lives. Yeah, they so wouldn't I mean, talk they, about that if niggas wasn't clicking on it. They niggas want to hear about lives. what people who cheated on who. It was like, yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm a particularly a fan of TMZ either. I don't consume either of these, either of these things that I say they're literally like the I mean, cultural I don't think cesspools it's just of the you. entire world. I just think that it's more people that are have a similar like stance with you against Wendy, but don't take that same tone or approach with TMZ when they basically do the same shit. It's like, well, where are we really drawing the lines of difference here? Oh, uh, they I both mean, are propped up by some network. Um, they both put out salacious shit. One just was willing to put her name on it, and the other one created a news like show. Show, and she created a daytime talk show. They do the same shit. It's just the way that it's presented is different. Oh, uh, I mean, things are just perceived to be different when you put your name on it. I don't know. I just think it's fucked up. And I also don't feel like her show is canceled. I feel like her and the network didn't come to an agreement. And no, I just feel like I wouldn't be surprised if she does something different. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, if she's canceled, she will be able to do something different. If she or if they have like rightful cause to fire her, I guarantee you they have like nine competes in her contract and she probably won't be able to do anything else. You know, she'll probably go to YouTube or something or make her own entity. I think she got a good, strong enough following. If you could do all of that, like people you love can her. rebuild something else, yeah. Particularly, like, the people who tend to be around when her show's on. I could see her going to Facebook. I like how Red Table Talk is over there. Yeah. I could see her rebuilding from this. I don't agree with the practices that's happening around her leaving, but they entertainers, and that's what they do, entertain. I'm not mad at either one of them, but I also don't consume either one of their content that they're putting out. TMZ or any other shade room, I don't support. I just I don't support that shit at all. I just I never could really get with it. It's 100%. like it's a bubbling cauldron of shit. Yeah, and just you know, people who enjoy that, you can enjoy. I'd it. be over there. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'd be over there and all that. So that's why. I, that's why I'm like. That's why I have this opinion where it's like, well, if I look at Wendy objectively outside of the way that I feel about her as a person. Let me take that away because or her that's persona, or yeah. her persona because that's what it is. Her persona. What right. she's doing is presenting an image. I don't know that woman. Yeah, she could be completely different than the I, image that I only presented. know the person that she presents to me. Yes, and I know that she's a very private person. And I know that a lot of the things that have happened to her recently have been public don't feel like an accident, especially when she seems to be private that maybe the other people that she's negotiating with are making these things more public because the court of public opinion is generally how things are decided nowadays. I mean, it's just one of those things. If there were backlash on TMZ about stuff, yeah, it should have been backlash when this shit really started to like really gain momentum. I get that we just all want like the juicy gop on people who think are above us, but them niggas is people. Like <laughs> they people, it's less like it's accepted bullying. That's why I don't understand why. Well, for, I like mean, a lack of a better word for when like people are leftists or liberalism want to talk about oh bullying and all this stuff should be banned and all that shit, but then they allow shit like this to continue in our society and the guys is well they just got to make money. So it's only convenient for you. Like, I don't give a fuck if I they don't. make one million or ten dollars. This is terrible. <laughs> we shouldn't I don't be, necessarily shouldn't be a think part of our culture. Like we I don't know. It's like I don't know if this has anything to do with liberalism or conservatism. I think it more so has to do with people and their But their I'll hear it more so on their side than I would hear it on another side. I'll say that. And that could be a thousand percent wrong, but I'll hear this more from the general idea is to be more open and accepting on this side and bullying is definitely not encouraged or just generalize things like that. I'll see that more from 
that side. And I'm not trying to make it in that way, but I'm trying to present a saying. point. Like you'll see it more on this side than you see on another side, but then allow this shit to continue. And I'm not saying it's nobody's fault and nobody's like position to stop this, but I see it more over there where it's like, we're so open and we're so accepting. And then like things that I don't agree with, like TMZ and all this stuff is still being, still being propped up and still being okay. Well, I mean, we can't really have it both ways now, can we? I mean, I think we would have to address an overall issue as like a, just a culture individually or overall because it's like honestly, for in terms of stars, we like unless they're doing something that's particularly bad, we really shouldn't care about what they're doing outside of what they produce. Like, I don't care that Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt had like their winery, the winery situation is just like. I don't care. That's y'all individual business. Why do we need to know this? Right. Somebody just found an arena to capitalize off of, and that's as a, at an expense of someone else's well-being. And they, like with Britney Spears, like her wife, Paris Hilton still talked about that because I watched her documentary. Like they just didn't think that this is not only like, what are you putting out into the world? But it's like clearly a money-driven is that is driven industry, which... Okay, we'll leave it at that. It's crazy that a lot of this is Paris Hilton's fault. Really? Well, yeah, real the Hilton thing. Yeah, her show kind of started. That shit or what? Yeah, she was what that of, and the car keeping up with the Kardashians. Pretty uh, much. Okay, hers came was the precursor to keeping up with the Kardashians. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was follow around someone that is extremely rich and watch them live their lives. And so it was her, the heiress to the Hilton family. Yeah. So you followed her life and everybody kind of fell in love with that. And then it, people really start trading on their lives. Yeah. And then when you start trading on your life. And then that's where kind of like this whole culture of like all access and just. Yeah, just. It's been slowly moving to where <clears throat> attention is a commodity. Not even only a commodity. Attention is the way that people are trying to pay you now. Yeah. And that's unacceptable. Yeah. It's like being paid. People are trying to like pay you with exposure. Like uh, shit. Like companies like Twitter. Yep. Like Twitter uh, has a podcast app mm-hmm. where, or shit. So does Spotify. And that this is the whole donation thing. Everybody's just trying to get you there to sign away all of your rights to shit to basically have access to their audience that could potentially find you. That's trading away shit where they're going to put ads on your shit and all these other things and profit off of you for the Exposure. ability to have attention. No, I don't want that. I mean, some people do, obviously, or else they wouldn't exist. But I don't know. So do I think I think all of those things are a problem? And I think we need to stop microanalyzing people's lives because they do a particular job and stop consuming certain things like Real Housewives. Ultimately superfluous. Like it's quintessentially the same thing as keeping up with the Kardashians where you pretty much trade as just like they all pretty much trade the mystique of where they live and what they do and who, who they're married to or whatever to like spread their image and all that other stuff. It's just like, why are, why is this a thing? Well, people particularly want to do it and like, or people want to consume it. So, I mean, I see it more so with women than I do with men. Like I don't see too many men that watch TMZ or Wendy Williams or no, like sometimes y'all pretend like y'all just be, you know, kind of skirting around and <laughs> y'all I mean, pay attention, I'm not saying but don't there pay are attention. No men. Well, I don't watch Wendy Williams because she just doesn't present. She's mostly like relationship gossipy stuff, and that's just not really where I'm interested at. It's like, but, but I'll I was... fuck around with like Shade Room occasionally. Um I check TMZ every once in a while. I'm not the biggest fan of them. But I fuck around with the shade room. Probably uh, the most I didn't even know what the shade room really was. It, it's like 
a Instagram blog, but also a website that has like news articles. It's, it's just one of those things that kind of keeps you up to date on all the like random gossip. Yeah, that's happening in hip hop and shit like that. Oh, uh, I more so keep I keep track of sports like that, except for like sports things. But that's and, what men do. Yeah, it's, it we exchange sports things for that. Like I know Jared, Jared Allen strained his right calf right now. Mm. No, immediately when that happened. Yeah, see, like y'all trade on wow, crazy. on the attention and the lives of it's the same thing, athletes. just different fucking. Well, I don't know who Jared. I don't know. I don't even. Know, I don't know. No, they just there. related to like the day to day struggle of being an athlete, yeah. as opposed to the day to day struggle. That's why they talk about. Oh, does this athlete fear this? Um, <clears throat> Is he the most feared player in the league? And just shit like that that gets trying to be personalized inside of. Oh, yeah. They're always trying wow. to create some storyline or something inside of sports. But I think, I mean, I don't think sports journal. Well, I sports journalism can be harmful, but I think it's less harmful than like fucking around with people's relationships. That's crazy. I just opened my eyes up a little bit more today. Oh, yeah. Me and Tony <laughs> have been me and Tony have been talking about that for a while because now that he works. The, when he starts moving in his different spheres and he actually saw how dudes talk about sports is just like we do the same shit culty. bitches be doing <laughs> it's the same shit just Quite different fucking content yeah like they be sitting up here like oh man you see that draft oh yeah like we're talking about That's the NFL scouting. we're talking about the NFL scouting combine Mm-mm. but um it's a bunch I don't of have no good segue for this so we just gonna talk about Kanye you want the old Kanye. You want the soul Kanye. You want the. I like this documentary. I like it a lot. Uh, I like the fact that it's been filmed pretty much since. Like, since like the concept of that. Ain't that the craziest? Like, dude picked up his camera. Is just like, well, well, I know what this is. I know how this is going to end. <laughs> it's, I mean, as you can see, arguably the ascent and descent, depending upon who you're talking to, because like, Hearing him, seeing Kanye when his mother's around, and seeing Kanye when he's not when his mother isn't around is just it's like, two totally different people, ain't it? He's a super quiet and reserved. He like to let his mom talk. Yeah, it's it's also just like a lot of things because his his mother seemed like the primary grounding entity. So all these errant thoughts that we're getting that we normally wouldn't be getting, or just someone who can actually come to him that he knows doesn't want anything from him because yeah. he's been here since the beginning is just like. Yeah, that it, humbleness when he got around his mother was quite riveting to see. Well, no, see, and I don't know. I guess I take it slightly different. Do you? Yeah. I feel like his mother is the one who propagated all of this. She championed everything of Kanye. In no short order. When she told Kanye about humbleness, it wasn't to be humble to others, she told him that he was a giant and he was going to stand in awe and that the giant sees nothing in the mirror because the giant is still searching for growth. It was never about shrinking himself to other people. Uh, Humility doesn't necessarily mean that you're shrinking yourself. I don't think those two things are synonymous. Because that's... Humility is more so, I mean, maybe it's my definition of humility, but humility is more so keep your head to the ground, style, keep like polishing your craft, doing your thing, and making sure you're the best of the best. For what if I am the best of the best? He is, but it's just like you don't maintain being the best of the best by like, but what if saying, I can? Like sticking up, uh, name a person that has yeah, Kanye. Uh, do you think he's still the produ- best producer in all the hip hop? I don't think that's what he ever wanted to be. It's just like, I, I think that that's something he was on his journey into what he wanted to become. I think the things that Kanye was the best at that other people like were the things that other people wanted Kanye to be the best at. I think this documentary does a very good thing in pointing out that, hey, they wanted Kanye to be a producer. Kanye never saw yeah, himself he to be the best musical act, but no, what he said is, I want to be the best. He said, in the seven days that I spent in the hospital after this accident, I did a lot of thinking. And what I want to be is the best dressed 
hip hop artist. You can say the best rapper. You can say the best producer. I want to be the best dressed. I think what I really got to go down to is uh, no. you'll hear a whole bunch of people say I'm the best rapper alive and they are all right because in their sphere, they are the best rapper alive. It's not this. about putting you up with competition or somebody else. You have to keep telling yourself that to keep pulling that shit out of you. It ain't really got nothing to do with nobody else in whatever, whatever is going on. You the best writer because you said you was the best writer. He the best writer because he said he was the best writer. But I don't think none of them would stop perfecting their craft. That don't mean you stop being the best writer once you've declared it. Oh, I mean, I think it's declaring yourself is just like, I'm just trying to be the best person. That but I see, that's why I mean by shrinking yourself. Like if yeah. my personality is to talk about my accomplishments, I'm not allowed to do that because I'm supposed to be humble. So I have to shrink who I naturally am because you feel like the way that I should go about this is this. I mean, that's untenable. At that point, you're just going to have to accept that some people aren't going to like you and some people are. That's fine, but that shouldn't be. But being humble then does require you to shrink yourself. Uh, no, he, true humility is just saying that I know that I'm not right all the time. That's it. I can be fucking wrong. I might be wrong about something. You relinquish your fucking pride. That's all humility is. Relinquishing your pride about who you think you are and what you think you know everything about anything. That's it. That's all true humility is. If it's not in your personality, if it's in your personality to be flashy and shit like that, okay. But true humility ain't really got nothing to be with shrinking yourself. It's actually great expansiveness and just saying, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something else. Humbleness is what y'all are speaking of, of what somebody would do and to where you talking down on yourself. You know, like. Uh, it's cool to recognize that you have talent and like what Pharrell was saying, you always want to keep that space in yourself to say, I'm kind of uncomfortable. Not just saying I'm it. That's it. That's I ain't got nothing else to learn. That's being prideful. Humility is what Pharrell was talking about. You are good. You're great. Can't nobody take your talent away from you. But always keep it in yourself to be like, mm. <laughs> shoulder shrug. That's what true humility is. Look, I could improve. I may be the best rapper alive, but that don't mean I don't have no chance to improve or change or fix things around. Being flashy and like saying about your accomplishment, that might be a personality trait, but that could also change. Well, I'm comfortable with that ex expression of humility. Most people just don't mean that when they say be humble yeah no they want you to you know and so that's cover yourself I, and coward yeah and it's that's humble why. and it's when people speak about humbleness they think about being a coward and keeping your nose to the grindstone and not being like, seen that is person, not and that's what I'm a person saying. that falls into like ash's thought pattern of that i would say is probably lebron james it's just like yeah it's not like he particularly cowers away from being called the best basketball player ever and, and everyone knows that he's really really good at this but and you He's have to know, like, still tries to go for improvement. You so. gotta know that's just somebody else's opinion of you, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. If they think you're a piece of shit or they think you the gods of all gods, it's really none of your fucking business. <laughs> you can't can't rely on either one of those. I, so true humility would be like, thank you, but I am also walking away from this. And both I, of them. I think what Kanye lost when he lost his mother is the person that he could express those ideas to that knew how to give him, them. not even interpolate them, give him something of value in return. Because it's not like she was like interpreting them for the rest of the world. She took what he said and then responded with her own wisdom. And he took that and applied it as he would. I think now he just expresses those ideas to the world because he don't have no one that he can express them to. And he just be going with them because he doesn't get any or doesn't have anyone that he feels like he can get any wisdom from that can guide him in any real way. Yeah. And he but doesn't when everybody probably wants something from you. And it's kind of watching this documentary is kind of felt like, well, damn, all of y'all kind of. All Fuck love. what you want to do, Kanye. You can do this really, really good. So do this for us. Yeah, because it's like, ultimately, him making a blueprint probably fucked up his life more than anything else. 
because it's just like hmm. I produced this whole album that's like banger after banger after banger after banger. Now everybody wants these beats, and the the studio and the record companies know I can make these beats. But generally, when you start making music, you stop producing as much. And I can make them more be- money probably as someone who makes beats than I can probably as a rec- or as a act myself. So when they run that math, they're always going to run the math on like the sure bet, which is you making beats. I mean, that doesn't stop the fact that what y'all are doing is using me. Oh, yeah. I mean, pretty much. And yeah. if every time and since I've been here, everybody's just kind of seen me as a ticket. Yeah. And this is the one Kanye will get you off, your gold or platinum album. Yeah, my mother was who started with me. So. Whereas it's just like he was living an okay life making beats, but he wasn't living the life that he wanted to be living. Like he was living over in New Jersey. I feel like he wasn't living the life that he wanted to be living for the same reason that I'm not living the life that I want to be living. What you're not doing exactly what you want to be doing. No. Um, I'm pretty sure that he, Kai said he spent $33,000 on a music video on a music video. Correct. Kanye had money. Yes. What Kai didn't have is the space to do and live the way that he wanted to. So all the money he was making, doing the things that he didn't want to do, he just put into trying to push forward into the things that he wanted to do. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's kind of... He was reallocating the funds that were coming in from over yeah, here. Yeah, because I feel like Kanye there. wasn't broke. He was just like, no. all right, I got all this money. Time to put it into shirts. It like I said, I put it into my shirts and trying to create buzz and just... Which is why I go so hard for us creating that other stuff is actually a really good example of why I go so hard at being like, well, let's do what we don't really want to do first to put it somewhere in. Because I get it that we want the creative endeavors to be our main bread and butter, but reality just kind of dictates that we have to build something else. So I'm not creating or putting nothing out from a place of, well, this is all I have and da da da. (laughs) No, nah. <laughs> I'm not a starving artist. I don't want that lifestyle. Sorry, buds, whoever don't agree with that, but I'm not that person and I don't do well of thriving and wondering about where I'm going to get my next meal or how am I going to survive, even if my daughter wasn't here. I just don't do good with that <laughs> at all. So it just doesn't put me inside the best mental state either. Yeah, and I know that's a good place for some people to be, but why Why would I want to? I don't want to create from that space. As anyone with high anxiety I will tell you, it's just like you always worrying will never really get you anywhere except for worrying about the yeah and then you have to think about like him in his situation or any artist that has gotten up to the point where they can command millions of dollars and get fill out sell out arenas how rare that opportunity is so for me to create from a space where I'm thinking of fame and fortune is not going to get me very far because I don't think it's really guaranteed but what is guaranteed is if I put out work that's from the heart and creating a space to where I can work whenever I want to is for now the priority. So I really do actually commend that, that he, that he could, you know, essentially create the way he wanted to, but that's not what, that wasn't his end goal. And that's what's always in the forefront of my mind is making sure those foundations are built. So then that way, hopefully if just at least for me, I can create from a nice, a a state of purity rather than just like a state of survival. Oh, and the other thing I noticed about the actual about the documentary is everyone was trying to latch on to him during his ascent. Like inside the act one of the actual documentary, I remember there were some local Chicago artists that got upset because he did not get mentioned inside of an article that he did about his production. And he was literally like, dog, I did say something. They just cut it from the article. Like. Why do you assume that there's some degree of malice inside of this when I don't necessarily control what's written? They don't hand me an article to prove it. They, I see the article when you see the article more time, more nine times out of ten. It's like I'm not somebody to the point where they're gonna run things past my publicist before they print something yet. I don't even have a publicist. Exactly. How about that? I would have. To, you know who they'd be running it past? My mama. They're not running past no one. So like. 
why you were upset? And did you just make a whole diss song about me for no particular reason? Yeah. It's just like, I'm upset. I'm going to make this diss song. You could have made the diss song and just got the emotions out and then deleted it. Nope, you released the goddamn song. No, oh, because I need everybody to know how I feel about this. Because you didn't mention me and I helped you get your start. And my feelings were hurt, even though you get partly I helped you get your start and I helped you learn how to make beats. But it was your drive that led you to learn these things and your overall skill set that led to this level of expertise. And then you took a risk and moved over to New York by yourself. And I probably really didn't send you any money when you did that. But anyway. The best thing you did was try to correct it. Yeah. So I actually commend Kanye for that. Yeah, for real Kanye arrogant seemed- nigga. If a real arrogant nigga didn't give a fuck about how you felt, you wouldn't have done that. I mean, he and that cares was a good a show about character. His roots. Yeah, There's, Kanye seems like he's always cared about Chicago and like. That's what I'm saying. A real and, arrogant <clears throat> person that's deeply like in their core, really selfish and arrogant would not have done that. And y'all got to pay attention to them small things because those are the things that are matter. He took the time out for himself to say, hey, let me make this right. That's a good vote of character <laughs> that really made me go, oh, that made me see him differently. Not that I saw him negatively. I've always been like a fan of his work and I've never really talked down on Kanye because I don't, I actually like him as a persona and a person and an artist and a musician. But that right there was actually, if somebody's really, really in their core, narcissistic and everything, you wouldn't have done something like that. It's just like the people... I don't even know how to really describe his overall ascent. It's just like he was just wildly talented and he just it was worth like, for. It was real weird to me that someone tried to come along and you got hurt. You got your feelings hurt because like he didn't mention me or something like that. Those things just come across as weird to me. And then and then inside the entire exchange, it wasn't necess- it was about how dude felt. Like Kanye never really expressed himself about like you literally attacked me at like the drop of a hat when you know me for majority of my life. Like you know who I am. Because at that moment it's not about that. One of us has to be the bigger person here. And that was Kanye. It's, I didn't I we couldn't get here have this conversation and then we can get into how I feel about it and then how you feel about it and now we're just talking about our feelings and that's probably not going to lead nowhere or I can let you express your feelings and we can move forward I can say my bad I did this this is what I've tried to do I can mention you and on the radio station let everybody know that no this is someone that held my start this is why he he got cut I mentioned him in an article they took him out but even when he did that the woman in the radio station Seemed like she was dismissing him, and I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, but, but it seemed like a lot of people dismiss manuf- Kanye." That's true. And oh, another yeah. vote of his fucking character is when like the phone rang and it went off. He asked, "Hey, can you turn that off?" Or when they was in the room talking about the music video, "Can you shut the door?" Truly, <laughs> true people like that. I was just thinking about all the things that he's did that just was like uh, you would have never thought. Like he's asking people, he's not telling you or demanding. It's not as pretty as you. Not pretty, please. Can you close the door? But just those things to keep in mind. It's pretty. It's a pretty simple request. Could you please? Could you close the door? It's like okay, yeah. But like how they be making him out to be like well, he's just so villainous. I'm like, no. Nah, I mean, this is when he was. When and it's early in his career, so things may have changed, but things like that you just don't go and notice. It's like combating like what they tell you about him and then what you actually see. You like, I mean, they hmm. but my only thing is like the record industry can be upset with him, but you, they pretty much made the monster that he is. Cause it's like I don't know if he's a monster yet. Well, I can never really get behind that. Like I said, I've always said that he do need an interpreter. It come out very, <laughs> very crazy. But he said that about himself. I mean, he's but not I don't a people know person. if he's a really a monster. I can't really say that no more. I'm getting well, to know him a pers- little bit better. The person that he is is based upon the interactions that I've seen. And like when they played it, when he was running around tra- playing, and it all falls down for people. And it's just like, and people were basically struggling. Like, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. And it's just like he's trying his damnedest to get the single off. And it's just like, first things first, I. W- 
every single person who showed up at that thing, regardless of where they are in that company now, they also be fired for whatever job that they were doing. Because it's just like, I'm no, a record because exec. You y'all, don't pay attention to him. That's it's just like y'all supremely lack vision. And y'all aren't useful. So y'all are all fired. Just because we didn't like that one single. I don't even think they didn't like the one single. I think that it that's not what they wanted from him. What we want from you is to make beats for our other artists. The end. I mean, these weird people, like, I don't even think record execs understand how beat make like hip hop beat makers even work. You have a lot of times you'd be having hundreds of them. Like you just have like a hard drive full of beats that you you have made. No, so, that's just now. Back in the day, it wasn't that easy to. Well, it wasn't. Well, I mean, this was pretty much filmed in like the early, like what, 20, 2004 mm-hmm. ish. So like that's when you've ha- Ableton's been a thing since Wu-Tang's existed. Like Rizzo was making stuff on the old Mac. So like true, it hasn't been like wildly available. Mm hmm widely available and super easily and stuff like that but like but it's always been a it's been a thing for a while so probably once he got to a certain point he so would- this was uh probably before 2001 it was before 2001 really uh you guys said that he he produced some blueprint right the this was just after he produced blueprint Moving in towards I think like, came out 2001, and then this he's making late registration in this. No, college dropout. Did it go? I thought it went late registration, college dropout, graduation. I thought that too. I looked it up today. College dropout is first, yes. Oh, I'm more familiar with late registration. And college dropout came out February 10th of 2004. Okay, so the very beginning of 2004. So yeah, you can. So he spent probably three years trying to make this album. Yeah, probably off and on while making beats for other people because he still had to make money. Yeah, and I know in 2001 to 2004, that was right before, that was my end of my sixth grade going into my ninth grade year. I was 11. I would have just been moving over to Shaker. Yeah, because 2004, I went to ninth grade. Um, and then that year, I moved out here. Um, so, yeah, no. Saving shit on, like, hard drives and moving around was not a thing. Oh, I mean, oh, it was kind of a thing. It just wasn't anywhere near. You were saving on a floppy disk. Yeah, you were, yeah. so I you were like saving on a floppy disk. Like, so no, no one was you know doing about that. the catastrophic thing about what Or USB drives was probably really expensive. Oh, they were. And he probably wasn't, you know, I mean, buying he wasn't up on that. Yeah, so just I was just like, saying, I feel like he was, he was probably slotting things because I don't know if you know the story you about... You saw him walk around with hella CDs. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> clearly he book. didn't have... Well, you got to drive full of heat. just carrying. sell CDs to people because what well, I think he was in the car with like Jess Blaze. Is that, well, no, I don't think he was with Jess Blaze. I think he was running around with Most Def and uh, somebody else. Yes, Most Def and, and um, Khaled Kweli. There we go. Yeah, Most just Def like, be having the biggest smile every time that man be around. I think Most Def just enjoys being alive. <laughs> <laughs> I love Most Def. He's an amazing actor. It's just like, oh, uh, it's his voice. It's so endearing. <laughs> He does have a good voice. It's just like, what do you do? It's like, it's his voice is what just walks that wonderful line of being just distinct enough without being annoying. It's just like, whereas some people's voice don't walk that line so great. Like, voices are a thing that set me off for the most part. This was inspiring for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for me too. It's just like, sometimes you just got to put your head down and plow through and get force people to listen to you. but at that point, like, I don't understand how the record executives and people at Nauseam can, like, see this and be like, so this is the reason why musically he always feels like he's right, because y'all were y'all were terribly wrong continuously. Y'all looked at him and said, this isn't going to work. 
this is a, we you can't necessarily do this. People don't like your image. People are gonna like you because you're not a gangster. Yada yada yada. You're not like Jay. You're not like this. You're not. I like also that. feel like a lot of that was his own thoughts. Uh, because you didn't to... see anyone say that but him. Yeah, what you saw them do is not pay him any attention. Yeah, reject the most likely, but because he was the he one kind of wasn't my job as. As the people that he went and played for, he played for the executive assistant. Her job is to do what executive her boss assistants do. tells her to do. <laughs> so answer the phone, do emails. You playing this for me don't mean nothing to me. You going to that A and R lady, who's the A and R for another artist. You playing her your music don't mean nothing to her because her job is to focus on this artist. I mean, so, A yeah, and R's will have more than one artist that they work for at a given time. But you not on my roster. But you can get someone put on in your roster. See, but why when I don't believe in you? And there you go. It's but not that's the, not a problem. Well, I mean, if you're the A&R that gave them Kanye West, it would matter a lot. No, because they have Kanye West. And if they wanted Kanye West to be making music and rapping, Kanye West, this isn't his first time playing the music for us. Or speaking to us about him doing this. I'm sure that he's talked to Dame and Jay and Beans and everybody. If they want this nigga to rap, he be rapping. What they keep telling us to do is, hey, call Kanye in to produce for this artist. So what I'm going to do as their employee is call Kanye in to come produce for this artist. Because that's what my job is. Oh, uh, well, I mean, if I were him, I would this just like, you know what? You don't want all Kanye West. Y'all get all Kanye West. You're not, you, y'all not getting these beats no more. And when y'all sales start going down, they'd nah, be like, no, nah, you can't do that. Because they going, they still got Jess Blaze over there. And while you did half of the album, Jess Blaze did the other half. Yeah. So we still but got dealing with Jess Blaze is a lot more. Well, it's not like no, Jess, Jess Blaze is a difficult person. It's just getting Jess Blaze to do an entire album is very expensive. It wasn't at that time because yeah. Jess Blaze wasn't Jess Blaze then. Am I insane? But Jess Blaze has been Jess Blaze for a while. It's 21 years ago. This is just like, Charles. maybe I'm just filling in all the 20 years of just yeah. plays that I've had. Yeah. yeah. But it's just it's like, no, it's, this yeah. documentary made me realize Kanye West has not always been Kanye. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It, like, it, bro, this is it just hit me like, oh, wow. One years ago, these niggas weren't these niggas. Not then. at all. They was in a room cultivating they, what yeah, they, they saw they as build, a vision. So no, like, we Chicago niggas were trying to get on the map. Like, no, I'm like, not doing this. <laughs> It's just like maybe I'm thinking about Jess Blaze as a getting Jess Blaze to do an entire album now. Yes, yeah, no, now Jess is like, stop talking to me. He, he doesn't want to like, hear that. Excuse me, <laughs> did you not walk into a room with a briefcase full of money? Yeah, so now why are you here? Yeah, but before when that was like Jess's first shot, like everybody was trying to be on the Jay Z album because they knew Jay was the next big thing, and so yeah, now that was everybody's like up and coming thing as producers. Oh, should have moved to LA. Yeah, yeah, so that's what that was like. So no, it was never going to be Kanye just like remove himself because no, we have this other young hungry producer that doesn't want to be an artist. All he wants to do is produce. So the placements that you are getting, he not getting. Placement he getting, you not getting. And if you just stop taking placements, we're going to start sending them all to this nigga. Well, at that point, you're just completely and totally dependent upon just Blaze. That's never a th- place where you ever want to be. Well, I don't. I mean, there was also Timberland coming up around that time. They did a lot with Pharrell coming up around that time because there's a lot of holding oh, Pharrell. No. Well, the so dealing with Pharrell at this point is actually expensive. Oh no, it was. <laughs> it's just like but, you can't afford for Pharrell. But you could afford Pharrell because there's, like I said, there's a lot of hope in Pharrell. Oh no, you could af- You can't afford Pharrell to do everything. No, not everything, but. They're going to have their in-house nigga, and I'm sure that they'll be able to continue to build. It had been different, but I don't think Kanye would have took that stance and been like, no. It's just like, what do you have to do? Because at that point, if you tell them no, it's going to get real quiet in the industry for you. No, you you just got to go over to Electra. Who the fuck is that? Oh, just another record company. company. Like, it's not just Def Jam inside of things. 
Because at this point, I mean, point, the only Alexis- record company that was fucking with him was what? Rockets Records or whoever most definitely was signed to? Rockets. Yeah. yeah. But there are, I mean, there are lots of record companies that, because there's just lots of record, record, record companies. And then you got to ask yourself the question. We recognize that there are a lot of wildly talented people, right? Just I mean, in, just in general. Yeah, in different capacities, yes. Okay. We also recognize that that talent doesn't always translate into the wildest amounts of success that it, you might expect it to, right? Mm-hmm. Depending upon the, yeah. You recognize that sometimes it's the particular opportunities and light that you're in that helps foster that, right? Eh, can be. Okay. So my only point with those things is... I, I know where you were standing. Rock is records and um, has some great lyricists over there. There's a Most Def. There's a Talib Kweli. Um, but we can never compare. It's not Rockefeller. It's, it's not. It, it, just, it just isn't. So you getting a placement on a Talib Kweli album isn't the same thing as you being someone who produced half of the blueprint. I mean, you can it just to doesn't death look. Death it, it just does. It just ain't the same. But you can go. No, Rockefeller is Def Jam. Well, Rock, Rockefeller is owned by Def Jam, but I don't think it was owned by them the entire time. I think that was a. I think that was a merger or purchase or something like. No, that. Rockefeller came up and then went under Def Jam, and then um, there was like a fallout, and then Dame left. Up. They didn't split. They didn't leave Rockefeller. No. Def Jam, no. Dame left Rock. And then Jay-Z became the president of Def Jam. Yeah. Oh, uh, but I don't know if at this point Rockefeller was a part of Def Jam. Mm-hmm. I know it is. Because mm. they're in the Def Jam building in the Rockefeller's area. Mm. Because that's, yeah, that's where it starts off. Like, he's like, yeah, we're in the Def Jam. He's like, this is you doing the Rock area. He's like, it just be quiet in their area. It just feel like energy. So, yeah, they're in the Def Jam building, but in the Rockefeller section. Also. Uh-uh. So, yeah, no, it's not. And so he's already in the building. So I'm sure that other niggas in the building know that this is what you do. But you know who we probably don't want to piss off? The niggas is about to be the biggest in the industry. And we know that Jay-Z is about to be the biggest because the nigga that was the biggest passed away. This is the reason why you got to produce under a pseudonym and never actually allow them to see your face. <laughs> so you want this nigga to be a ghost? Quintessentially, that helps a lot more. <laughs> I mean, it's like, just like, look at this. I Where are you like getting ghosts? these fire beats from? No, I don't feel like. So you just going to pop up with the beats because like back in that day, you didn't have no technology to be sending shit for real. Yeah, you did. You can send beats through email and other ways. There are mechanisms. Like back in the day, do you realize there didn't used to be a file size limit on emails? They need to bring that shit back. <laughs> it's just like, the fuck. Why is that not a there's thing? There's some anymore? old Hotmail accounts that were out here a while. <sighs> I need I, more. It of took this. me a while. My friend, a friend of mine, actually pointed that shit out. But also, I don't think a beat is larger than 512 megabytes. We can store it on a floppy disk then. Damn! Remember, memory cards used to be 500. Or you know what you could do? Send that boy <laughs> in in a floppy disk. Ooh. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> I mean that's how we used to store things. No one's taking put sending it that. in the CD jewel case. You're your beat, yeah. sir. Mm. Who is this dude? Why won't he actually see us? Because what I come, I mean, yeah, they could send in the Pro Tools, but I'm just pretty sure that one Kanye likes to produce in the studio. He said that in the part two. It's like he got his own studio now. now. <laughs> he had his own studio then. Mm. It no, just wasn't didn't. as great of a well, studio. in his home, yeah, but like a for real like professional setup. He had like you know, piano just... keyboards and like different like machines and things. Oh right? yeah, that's not, that's I'm not saying studio. it didn't look rickety. <laughs> but <laughs> it's still his studio. studio. Though, in all fairness, yeah, so. it is a studio. Uh, I mean, I feel like all the best beat makers kind of start out like that. Well, yeah. Because it's just like, look at it, because I watched all of uh the Wu- the story of Wu Tang and it's just like Rizza Rizza had a way worse production environment than Kanye did to begin with. Rizza's production environment was terrible. Is it like an actual documentary or is it uh, niggas not, acting? It's, it's acting. It's not like an actual doc. 
Tired yeah. of them fucking things. See, I like the act. I like the documentary where see I no one was really following like, around Rizza from the beginning because but still I like actual documentaries that like talk to people who was there or the actual person rather than just niggas dramatizing it. Like why do I I don't need that. I don't care. I don't I hate them shits. I hate them so fucking much and I refuse to watch them. I, after the temptations, I'm like, I'm never watching this shit again. Oh, I'm not looking. It's not quite like the temptations, but but I don't like niggas acting out history and the like temptations. that. I don't want to see that shit. I don't know why. Like I'm real passionate. You don't like, like based. You don't like based on historical events type things. No, it could be back. Ba- no, nah, yeah, <laughs> I don't want it based on it. Tell me from the niggas that was there. I like that. Interview well, process. I will say the entirety of Wu Tang had a uh, they had input about what was going on in there. On it because obviously anything that has to do with Wu Tang, I don't want you. I don't want no secondary yeah, nigga like dramatizing that, what happened. Just be like, because hey man, we was in the studio one day, and I want to hear it directly from Riz's means, mouth. I don't want to make myself look as bad in this one particular area. You don't think they did that on there? Um, I mean, you don't think they cut stuff? Yeah, you I have can't, can't to in order to have some well, cohesive I'm work. About, I'm talking about I'm dramatizing talking about the shit. Yeah, it's like she's talking about dramatization. But, yeah. but that's what I mean inside of them having the ability to influence that make me seem like I said something amazing right here. The social make network is a good idea of why I don't like, like it was that a really shit. Big what? Thing. With Mark Zuckerberg and his other Edward, I can't remember his last name. Now this paints a picture of Mark Zuckerberg in my mind because this was a story that was acted by somebody else or uh, what did I watch the current war with Tesla and Western House and Edison they can't you can't say that those shits don't affect you and how you perceive someone else I don't like that I will watch it for entertainment value sometimes but that's really I'll give you rare. a good example like um, the NWA documentary oh well yeah, you putting shit on it that may or may not have happened. Because I oh, get you it, you got to sell a movie. Yeah. I get that. Like, like I, go ahead. But I don't like that personally. Uh, I mean, for the most part, everyone was kind of... Jerry was the, is the person who seemed like the worst person inside the entirety of the NWA documentary. True, but... <laughs> but now you got a bad perception of Jerry. But no, shit. <laughs> no, everyone kind of has a bad perception. Let's, let's go to Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre seemed like the hero in that movie. Right. Yeah. This nigga did a hundred down the highway in LA and slowly comes to a stop and the cops just let him get out the car. He don't get roughed up, beat up, none of that. Because that's what really happens in LA. I'm gonna just let you know. Yeah. Like, especially back then, they wasn't just like, Oh yeah, get out the car, bro. Or would it, they constantly cool. do an easy E and make him seem like this crazy ass wild nigga that ain't got no like come yeah. on, I'm tired like, of this fucking narrative, man. <laughs> it's just very like decided yeah <laughs> and so don't... sure they cut some scenes but whatever you decide to show me is what happened yeah and like what I've seen from the Kanye documentary that's the only things that I can point out to be like this is contradicting to what I've been seeing in the media that's how I can say, well, well, this might be hitting a little bit closer to home because the media has painted a perception of him. But I'm seeing something totally different over here. And you're right. This could just come from him because us as niggas and us as friends. You are right. They had to cut it out to make it look well, different. Well, it's not even necessarily that. It's also the fact that this happened two decades ago. Yeah. I'm not even going to contest that. Decades. People do change. I'm not going like to contest that. His mother's that. death hit him hard and the entire Taylor Swift thing is just I guess, like, But at I least it's from his mouth. It's <laughs> him changing, though. I guess from what I see from now to then, Kanye didn't change. Just the people that are privy to who Kanye really is did. Kanye was always full of himself. Full of who he is as a person. Yeah, I mean, he was always a very confident person. It's just that they're, the people around him changed. That means the level, like the type of grounding and the type of environment that he was in changed. So therefore, the things that he is more confident about changed or that confidence started ballooning over to other things. I don't know if it ballooned over to other things. I just or flowed over. Ballooned over is probably not the thing. It's I just like this just... cup is full and now it's starting to overfill in the other areas inside of his life. I don't know. I just think that would... It was more of 
just the same of who Kanye is. Like, none of this is really, like... New, for real. New. Like, this is who Kanye has been. He's been... It takes a certain type of person. The person that walked up on stage and yanked the mic from Taylor Swift is the same person that stormed into the executive assistant's office and just started playing his album, regardless of what she had going on. Because she had meetings. She was on the phone. He just started playing the music. So at no point has he had regard for other people. This yeah. has been this has been Kanye. But now we just are more privy to it. So for me, it's not, oh, Kanye changed. Kanye been Kanye. You niggas just tired of it. That's cool. But it's not saying we want the old Kanye back. You don't. What you want is Kanye to act the way that you want him to act. Because yeah. old Kanye, new Kanye is the same Kanye. This nigga rude, abrasive, and fully so- focused on himself and getting to where he needs to go. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I just don't necessarily, I don't know, I don't think that men- uh, men- uh, men- 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 mentality, there we go, <laughs> is going to work inside of all facets of life. Because where he was at that point in time, I think he probably needed to be a bit more rude and more abrasive because of the fact that a lot like, of competition. Like, like he was in a no fuck. He was in we're pretty inside much of hell, my nigga. Hip, <laughs> we're inside two thousand and one hip hop environment where yeah. pretty much every is like, yo, y'all let some of these clown ass dudes get contracts, but I didn't get a contract. I mean, but no, I think I would argue that he's needed to be that rude and abrasive this entire time. Oh, I think once he finished up with graduation, it's just like, all right, you're here. You're pretty much ascending. No. You don't have to be. He don't. It's not been about music for him, though. Like, I get the thing with, like, the music or not necessarily music with clothes and things like that, because him getting inside of that door was very, very difficult for but him. That's what people were mad at him about. They're like, you always compare yourself to white people and talking about all of these white people. I mean, who is there else to compare to, though? Well, in terms of clothes, there really isn't. Well, they're mad. Oh, you always talk about Walt Disney and Steve Jobs. But what he's doing is speaking about himself in the light of innovators. Right. Uh, the people that you guys prop up. Exactly. Like, so we don't prop- have those innovators well, that are Steve propped Jobs up like really that. Isn't an innovator. But in any event, that's more so me being a computer person because that nigga can't call program. But in any- even Anywho, if you didn't have, we don't have those people. He came up with the idea. Uh, I, I value execution more than ideas. If you can't, like, if you have an idea but you can't do it, then it's just an idea. Mm, if I, I did execute on it. I pulled together the resources to make it happen. Because it's that's like, execution. Well, no, because he had multiple partners at that point. And they were more so the tech half, and he, they figured out, and also like he, he stole the UI and the mouse and the keyboard from IBM, so he didn't necessarily execute on that. Like, yeah, no, just my overall thought process when it comes to Steve Jobs is just like, you didn't really like the user interface for all of your computers were pretty much came up for, for to by someone else. Like the iPhone really isn't that much of an innovation. It's just a, it's a touchscreen phone. We've had those for a while. So. I mean, it was one of the first. I mean, being one of the first, you're still not the first and you really didn't do anything that was revolutionary. Like we had touchscreen things with camera phones on them, but you refused to put one on there. So that means you could, make more money later when you added a camera to it. You guys eliminated it. Like you, Steve Jobs and the entire corporation of Apple for the most part has been about trying to make more money progressively throughout life, which well, is I would say it's probably the iPod. That was the innovative thing from Steve yeah, Jobs. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the most. That's what well, people point MP3 to player. is. There MP3 was no player. MP3 player. Yeah, there were. It just weren't popular, but there were. The Charles, iPod stop telling me about it. things that don't matter. Well, no. No, the, the, when I say they don't matter, if they didn't change 
the way that the landscape operated, then they don't inherently matter. That's because that's they what, would have died out. That's the reason why I'm saying he's not an innovator. The, no, he did innovate the landscape because I did this and changed the entire landscape. The way that I did it and introduced it to everybody changed the landscape. That's innovation. You created. I'm not a creator. I innovate would exist. Kanye didn't create clothes. Kanye didn't create shoes, but he innovated the way that it happened. Innovation isn't creation. And I think that's where people get confused. I didn't create MP3 players, but I innovated that shit. So everybody uses them. No one buys music. We want to, we want to, everybody wants to put these songs on this little cube and walk around with it. Now, no one's holding CDs. I killed an entire industry. So yes, you niggas made it. But I made it great. Uh I don't necessarily agree with that. What part don't you agree with? What'd you make great? MP3 players. No, you didn't. I did. Did you? Yes. How'd you make it great? Because everybody uses them now. What you wanted when you created this was for people to use it. You're like, oh, this would probably be a great idea. But you didn't have the the wherewithal or the understanding of how to get that out to everybody. I turned Popularize this into... would be somewhere you could use. You made it popular, sure. Yeah, that's pop, that's popularization, not innovation. We can that's all marketing. agree that he is an no, icon I, <laughs> at no, no. this point, right? <laughs> Regardless of how he got there. Sure, I popularized he's pretty it. iconic. But I innovated the market and I innovated how people sell things. That's innovation. Yeah, you innovated how people sell things. The innovation, like I said, I am an innovator. You just said he was an innovator. Yes, he is. He innovated how people consume and sell things. I innovated the market to the point where niggas don't carry CDs anymore. Niggas don't give a fuck about a Walkman, tapes, none of that. Niggas is all about digital consumption of music. I mean, those phases, for the most part, have happened throughout history to begin with. That's like saying when the when people, the marketers of the cassette wiped out the eight track, it's just like, no, that's just technological innovation. That's that happens procedurally over based over time, just like when the C, like CDs came back. No one, no, cared, about, no one cared about tapes. Uh, when like when people. Like the biggest innovation, honestly, the biggest innovation that Apple but has CD created coming was after tapes was is an innovation. ITunes. Those are just because other things come doesn't mean that the thing before it wasn't an innovation and the person who made it wasn't an innovator. The nigga that made CDs when everybody else was using floppy disks and tapes was an innovator. He saw what the landscape was and said, I think that we can all go here. We this created, is a better space. We created a storage medium that's completely and totally superior to this other storage medium. It doesn't have the same problems. It can't be wiped out by magnets. It's actually a more permanent thing. Is like this is for all. This is completely, and we have more space. This is completely and totally better in every single facet than a floppy disk. That's innovation. Exactly. That is actual. That's we made something better. It's just like, yeah, you can innovate marketing no, no, no. and stuff like that, but it's but just like it's the nigga that created it, the nigga that made it popular. Uh I mean, that's that's marketing. But that's also innovation. If I if you innovated I mean, this object, what I did was innovate people's idea and understanding of how things work. Or what it could do and where it could take you. I mean, yeah, that, but that's just that's marketing. I mean, but that's, that's what also innovation. But that's what marketing's always been: selling mm-hmm. things to people. Like, I created or the thing. Changing. You sold you. You got people to think that. But this Steve was, Jobs didn't sell something to people. What Steve Jobs did was convince people to stop using other things. There were other MP3 players out at this time as well. The Zune exist. Zune came after the iPod. Yeah, I know some, but I'm, what I'm saying is none of these other things were that. So his innovation was we're using the iPod. Yeah, and about in about in 2002, 
they had a lot of and now we're moved over to streaming it's just like we progressively move past things but the nigga that figured out streaming and how to get there innovated yeah because they created a, they created and programmed an entire service that algorithmically presents the music that you are more likely to like like on the service yeah that's innovative And the niggas that got people to use it also innovated. I, 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 I more so like that. No, you just marketed my product. Or your product could have died in obscurity like thousands of products do, regardless of how much better they are than the other is, thing. But that's just the reason why we pay marketers. Like, we know computer guys know we're not good at certain things. We're not good at selling these things, but we know we have a good idea. So we pay somebody to come in here and sell the thing. But in the Steve Jobs situation, it was different. He had the idea and got with some computer guys that knew how to execute on the idea. It is, but he's, I mean, it's not, but that's the thing. It's not like he actually wrote the press release for the iPod. Someone else did no, that. But he he, no, what I said is Steve Jobs had the idea for it. And got with niggas that could create it. It's just like, what do I want to make? I want to make it make a thing that can play music. And yeah, I want to make a thing that can play music and store it locally. Cool beans. So you already had a team of people who were you had a computer you had a group of computer people because you had already you own Macintosh, or at this point I think, I don't know when they actually had that hub up with the Beatles. I think they there were Macintosh at this point because but in anywho, uh so you came together and you had in and you had engineers come together and like do a thing and make that, but I don't know how much input he really had inside of that thing's creation. And also I don't really, really wouldn't take it as an innovation because these things already existed. You just kinda made it really good. Like what do you think innovating is? Innovating, creating so No, those, you keep saying innovating and creating. They're different words for a reason. Uh well I'm using creation in the definition of innovation. But creating something is different than innovating. Innovating is to approve on something that already exists. And you keep detracting from Steve Jobs because this already existed. Yes, but he innovated on you that. You iterated on it. No, that's an innovation. Just It's a new iteration of something that existed. But that's an innovation. An iteration, if it was just a plain iteration, would be me doing a new reprint of a book. That's why when they... Update software, it's not the, oh, this is 1.1 again. No, this is 1.12. It, they're, they're innovating something in there. They're improving upon something in there. I mean, I don't necessarily. You, I mean, you, you just don't value that. I, I mean, I value the people who made the thing. Like, the iPod scroll wheel was a really great idea and it changed the way that people actually move around things. But I don't like that wasn't really a part of this. The pitch is just like the idea was creating this thing. And then a bunch of, a bunch of engineers and people came together and they had a bunch of great ideas about how to make the best thing possible. But like, Someone being like, but if I never a, told you to do that, you to would make have a never better MP3 done that. Player? Yeah, if I never told y'all to do that and use the things that were most important to me, which are design and ease of use for the user, because that's what Steve Jobs was all about. So, sure, I didn't say give it the spinny wheel that makes it easy for people to find and go through music. What you know is the person that you're creating this for likes things to be smooth and seamless. So you create with that in mind. You create with the person that you're creating for in mind. So my fingerprints are all over this bitch. 
because you niggas wouldn't have been creating this if I hadn't said, hey, you guys come together and create this. That matters. Uh -huh. I'm not saying y'all don't matter. I'm not saying that they are less important, but I'm saying that you don't minimize the nigga that had the idea because if the idea was never had, then we wouldn't be here. Like the nigga, if no one ever thought about lights, regardless of whether who actually got these bitches to cut on and shit, we would still be lighting shit with fucking candles and fire. We need the niggas to have the ideas, regardless of whether they can be the niggas to execute. Putting I mean, the idea out into the atmosphere is also valuable. I just, I mean, maybe it's because I've hung, hung around a lot of idea people for a very long time, and there's been a lot of ideas. And not no, you hang around people that are dreamers. I mean, dreamers and idea people are. No, kind of they're not. No, they're not. Yeah. Niggas that have ideas put their shit into action, whether it turns. I'm an idea nigga, but every idea that you've seen me have, I be trying to put that shit into action. Niggas that be dreaming are niggas that we used to hang out with that would talk to us about it and then give us every reason why they couldn't put that shit into action. No money is going to stop me. No. Oh, this is a hurdle. Fuck that. We just, we about to do it. It's, it might not look the prettiest. We might have to figure it out, but we going to figure out how to get to it. I had an idea and I, I called on you. I mean, that's happened quite a bit. From whether... oh, no, for the website. Oh, well, yeah. That's not where Charles' mind was at in creation. Well, I mean, it's always been an idea that I've had, but it's just like taking the time to sit down and execute on it is more so just not necessarily embittering, but it's like time consuming when you have other things that are pulling on you. So, yeah. Oh, it's just like based on, I mean, for me and Steve Jobs, based upon his history, I just don't necessarily fuck with him all like that just based on the fact that it's just like he isn't people I mean maybe because I'm just more in tune with the way things were actually functioning but it's just like it's not as big as of a like you user interface is a very very important thing and making sure people can consume your products is also very important but is just like it's I don't put this with Steve Jobs progressively throughout his career there has been multiple instances where he has taken things or co-opted things or used things that just because one like a la mouse keyboard so on and so forth those were innovations that IBM came out with years and years and years ago but what he did is he went into IBM quintessentially he finagled his way into actually seeing their prototypes and then he took their prototypes and, went and just used them for himself. Like as I don't know how one can call himself like an innovator but like openly fugazi and take shit from other people with like no type of with no type of remorse or uh or so you want niggas to be moral to be innovators well not necessarily be moral but if if ideas are the things that are important to you they should be kind of they should almost be not necessarily sacrosanct but important no my ideas are important to me not ideas in general just mine yeah at, at that point yeah, then if you're operating inside of that entire inside of that entire mode, you're that's going to be a very very bloody place because at that point you're going to get upset when people stare steal from you. But it's just like, oh, you you stole my idea. Well, you stole from this person, so as of this point, it's okay to steal from you. Yada yada yada. Nah, that just gets real dirty and real filthy. That's the business world. Yeah, I don't like it. Oh, okay, well, you keep trying to insert insert morals and morality into lots of things that they don't belong. Yes, Steve Jobs took the ideas that he saw from another company, 
and executed on them. You niggas had the idea before me. No, they didn't take the idea. They were done. Mouse and keyboard were a done deal. I didn't steal the physical hardware. What I took was what you guys were doing to my company and had them recreate it. <laughs> if your shit was done, put it out. But you didn't. I don't know why. But that's on you. I decided it was a go. I liked it. I did it. Y'all liked it. Y'all held on to it. Whose fault is that? Because they were trying to solve issues with the trackball and a whole bunch of other stuff. All right. Well, I put it out. I don't know. I have a problem with. I see. I know. I know. Mm. We're 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 clearly on opposite lines. Yeah. But Kanye's point was, I'm mad at other people because what I want to do is make clothes and change fashion and innovate on that. I didn't create fashion, but I want to improve upon it. Oh, that's what I mean, he's doing now. Yeah, that's what he cares about more but so now than any other time. So. I feel like that's what he's cared about. If you say in these documentaries. The only thing I want to do is to be the best dress after what you tell me is you feel like God uh, put you in an accident to show you that he could give you everything in life and then also take it away. You weren't worried about any of the other things that we loved you for. And maybe that's our fault. Oh, I'm surprised he was making beats at that point in time. Because it's like, if you really love fashion, you probably would have went over to that as opposed to like fucking around inside of this beer, but I understand at this point in time and this at that critical juncture, those two things are very connected. It's just like hip hop and fashion are pretty much walk hand in hand. So if you want your shit to be sold in any type of thing, and he did actually change fashion at that point because button up polos and all that other shit became like very prominent. Shit, he's changed fashion now. Niggas was wearing the holy shit when that was his whole vibe. Um, niggas stay with the Yeezys, his whole beef with, oh, I think it's about to stop recording. Oh yeah. We're towards the end of the thing. Oh, all right. Well, that's crazy. It just started flashing, caught my eye. Yeah. Um, maybe we should stop. I don't know. Alrighty. Well, that's craziness. Look at that. Oh, the camera told us we off. need to leave. So yeah. we'll catch you guys later. Yeah. Getting into a whole vibe. We're going to give you part two of this Kanye. All right. I'm going to finish this documentary. All right. Bye-bye. You better play that episode. I'm not...